think we're going to have another what is. Okay, and today's what is, is starch conversion. Um, for a lot of you guys, been doing this for a long time, a lot longer than me, you know, this is uh, very basic for you, but but I would imagine then the questions I get, there's a few people out there that have a couple of questions and then just to help them out, that's what we're going to do. Okay, uh, first I'm going to enjoy me a great bourbon that we made and it's called Envy Bourbon, or that's what I call it, Envy Bourbon. It was modeled after Angel's Envy. Uh, it turned out pretty fantastic. Ah, very good, very good, I like that. Okay, so as the other what is, we're gonna keep it very simple. And like I said before, this is uh, for distilling and uh, whole brewing, because they're all pretty combined. It's gonna be about grains, it's gonna be about malting. And what we gotta do is we just gotta ask some questions and answer them, okay? first things first. Welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Uh, well before we get started, before I forget, after the video, or you could do it now, but after the video, please consider uh, subscribing to the channel so we can keep everything going. Okay? Alright, let's get going. Let's get started. So, first question we got is well how is this done in nature uh, to convert you know, the, the starches over into sugar well in nature what let's say that we have corn grown and at the end of the season the corn would dry the seed would actually fall to the ground and it will lay there on the ground and it some of it will get covered up with dirt some of it will not um, but what happens three things need to happen for that seed to germinate okay number one it has to have oxygen number two it has to have to have a certain moisture content within the seed and three it has to be the right temperature okay so like all winter long it too, might be too cold for it to germinate so it's going to just lay there and the outside part of the husk of the seed will protect it and but once it gets those three things met okay the enzymes within the seed will uh, start to uh, turn them starches over into sugars and then the seed will actually start to grow and that is how it's done in nature I know it's so simple right don't ask me questions how it all works but that's what what it does okay okay so alright the next question what are the parts of the seed now this is just a growing of let's call it a seed okay uh, like I said before you got a protective husk around the uh, the seed all right the inside part here the endosperm that is the starch that is the food storage for the seed so when it needs to start growing uh, it needs something to get it going okay now so that is and that's actually the part that we're really after let's say in corn okay because we're really after that all right the next part the layer between the husk and the food starch is it I might not pronounce this right aileron 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 all right that is the what produces the the enzymes okay and the enzymes is what changes this starch into a sugar and that's what we're after right and this little piece here is the embryo that is what will eat the starch or the sugars and start to uh, you know make roots and it will start to you know the seed will start growing and the plant will start to uh, come and come out okay so that is the part the basic parts of the seed like I said before we're gonna keep this as simple as simple can be uh, if you want to you know there's tons and tons of information out there if you how deep you want to go into it okay so the next question I have is all right, the grains, and how do we manipulate the grain to uh, for our use? Okay. All right, let's start with something like corn. Okay. The way we use corn, okay, you can mulch corn, 
and but it has uh, barely enough enzyme to convert its own cell. But we'll get to that into the next section, okay? So what we want to do with corn, it has a lot of starch in it, all right? Or yeah, a lot of starch, and we could use to convert over into sugars. Okay, so how do we get that starch out? Well, first we're going to mill it or grind it, whatever way we want to do. Uh, if you get like uh, flaked corn, it's been steamed rolled, so you don't even have to cook it. It's already been cooked in that process. But let's let's go back just to the corn, you know, the corn kernels. Okay. So what we need to try to do is we need to try to cook that corn and uh, to get that starch released. So we ground it. All right, now we mixed it with hot water. There's two ways we can do that is we can either just boil it. We got to get to like 190 degrees. We can boil it, but you just got to be very careful not to scorch it. If you do scorch it on the bottom of a pot, it ruins the taste. You can't get that out. Okay, so that's one method. The other method is, and this is what I do a lot of, is I'll put 190 degree or boiling water into the mash tun with the corn, and then I'll cover it up and try to maintain some of that heat, and I'll let it sit there and cook that way for an hour and a half. And I've had pretty damn good luck with that, doing it that way. Oh. Uh, now, one thing you can do in the so we got the starch out, one thing you can do at this point is you can use some high temperature enzymes that you can buy and add to it because let me back up one sec when you cook that corn it is going to be one big old blob all right the one way to thin it up is use some high temperature enzyme and you can put that in at 190 degrees. It will thin that down. It will start converting that starch over into sugars and really thin that up. <coughs> okay. The other thing you could do is once it gets to a certain temperature uh, below 160, you can add a multi grain to the corn and that will start converting those starches over into sugars. Uh, or a combination of the both. And so that's the long and the short of corn. Or if you had a, let's say you had some unmalted grains, uh, that would be, yeah, I think in, uh, let me see, um, like in Irish whiskey, part of the Irish whiskey, you use a, an unmalted barley and a malted barley. And we'll get into malting here in a minute. Okay, so, yes. There's a couple different ways to make this happen, okay? I told you we're going to try to keep this as simple as we can. Damn, that's good. Yeah, it's like eight, eight months old, something like that. Very good, very good. Okay, next question. The malting process. Uh, the short answer to the long question is, is very simple. Okay, malting is a process to produce enzymes. That is the main thing we're malting for. Now, don't get me wrong, there's starches and it will produce the enzymes to change them starches over of, of that grain into fermentable sugars. It ain't just for the enzymes. It's, that's only a small part of it. It works together. So how do we do that? Well, okay. So, so let's, let's give you an example. Let's take some barley. Uh, what we would do is we would get we would get the barley wet, soak it, and then let it dry, soak it again, and then let it and keep it warm. And what happens is you're tricking the, the seed into thinking it's out on the ground getting ready to grow. You know, it's time for it to start growing. So, what you do is, once that seed starts to sprout, it's producing those enzymes to convert its food source, starch, over into fermentable sugars. 
So as soon as it happens, what we do? We dry it out and then everything stops. Okay, so now what we have? We have a seed with some starch and some enzymes ready to go. Okay. So that is what a malt, and that's, that's malted. You can malt corn, you can malt barley, you can malt wheat, you can malt any seed. Um, now, if you notice in like the uh, malted barleys, there's different kinds and different colors and different smells and different tastes. And what that comes from is how much they dry it. Okay, so you take a black malt, it's going to be really dark in color and it's going to get that like coffee taste. Or you can taste uh, some that is just bright, just caramel color, give you a caramel taste. Uh, but the more you roast it, like at caramel, you're going to kill the enzyme. So really it's only for taste at that point in time. So that's why your base malts, uh, like your six row, your two row, they're very, very, very golden brown. That's it. And they have a lot of enzymes in it. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you roast them too much, it just kills the enzyme and they're just for flavor at that point. Okay. So we started talking about enzymes. There is two main enzymes that we're going to use, and that is going to be the alpha and the beta enzymes. Alpha and beta amylase enzymes. Did I get it right? Okay. So what is it, some of the important temps of that? And these are very, very, very important. Okay. Those two enzymes work very, and, and each one is a little bit different, but as a general rule, they work the best between 146 degrees and 158 degrees. Okay. That's when they work the best. Okay. Now, denaturing. After about from 160 to 170, you will kill the enzymes that's in that seed. Okay? Do these questions. All right. Next question I have is diastatic power. What is it? Well, diastatic power refers to the how much enzymes powers of that malt. Okay? For example, you got six row barley has a diastatic power higher than let's say two row barley. So depending on how much so if you're fermenting a lot of grain you might want to go with a six row uh, to help ferment the rest of the grain. Uh, the scale that we use is called uh, degrees of Littner. All right. For any seed a rule of thumb is that you need about 30 degrees of Littner to convert itself. <coughs> and anything left over after that 30 degrees, it will help out and convert anything else that is, that is around it to help convert uh, those um, starches into sugars. So let's say that you had unmalted corn and you're using, so 30 degrees is going to convert the, the seed, and then some of these. Uh, like Sicro, I think it's read 150, 160 Littner, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is. So it only needs 30. The rest of it's going to help out anything that's near it. All right? So that's one of the reasons uh, your base malts is very, very important. Okay, so next question I've got. Why do we need starch conversion? Well, the simple answer to that is to we need sugars for yeast. Okay? And that is one way that we can get the sugars out of grains. We got to convert the starch. Now, if you have fruit that has a natural sugar in it, hey, you got it made. But even stuff like bananas, they have um, the banana itself. It has enzymes that's in the skin that will help convert those starches over to sugar. So, yes, we need starch conversion to do what we need to do. In closing, so I hope you enjoyed this what is is starch conversion. It, and like I said before, it's a process that we can use to change any starches over into sugars that we're after so that the yeast can change it into alcohol. And ain't that the name of the game. 
<sighs> I hope I answered one question. Um, hopefully more, but if I answered one, I did my job. Uh, this is a great hobby. It's a lot of science in there. And I just try to keep it very, very simple because that's all I needed. Um, I guess the last thing I got to say. Well, no, let me put this in there. Hey, what I, remember what I asked you in the beginning? If you like this, please hit that subscribe button. It does help us out a lot. Okay, last thing I got to say is thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody.